And uh, this work is co-authored with uh, a number of people, and Chang Yidong, Nada, and Chris, and uh, Yalan Wan. The reason I'm standing here and wear this is because I'm too short. I hope you will not be able to see me if I'm standing there. All right. I'm talking about a hash-based director anonymous attestation. For background of this work, I needed to say, or I would like to say a few words about trusted computing and attestation. The philosophy of trusted computing is zero trust, but verify. So that means for your computer system, to start with, you don't trust it. But you would like to verify a computer system before you want to deal with it. No matter whether this computer system is your own laptop or this is a network. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So it will be the computer system could be a, a network, could be your computer talking to somewhere else. You want to trust the computer system means you verify it. Verification, of course, is use cryptography. That's why I'm here in this crypto conference. So cryptography will give a verification, a meaning, this including traditional crypto like uh, authentication, authorization, data confidentiality, data integrity, and the key management. But there is one thing which the crypto community may not be quite familiar with, is called attestation. So what is attestation? Attestation is a service. Attestation means a protocol between a verify and uh, a proof. The proof we call the attester. So a prover is actually your computer. Your computer tell verify its own state and uh, give attestation evidence. The attestation evidence is a digital signature and then the verify based on a lot of other things, uh, policies, endorsement, and uh, uh, the references based on all of this plus the digital signature, verify will provide a result. But verify is not a final decision maker. The decision maker is a relying party, that is user, that's us. So we, based on another set of policies, decided whether we want to accept attestation result or not. Yeah, so that is attestation service. But now, I want to you to ignore all those complicated stuff. Only think about a digital signature is the one used for attestation. Now, if a approver want to privacy, then the approver want to turn a traditional digital signature to an anonymous digital signature. The reason is simple. If your computer is a prover, your computer talking to every other computer in the world to provide the attestation evidence, then your digital signature will connect all those attestations. So everybody will know where you are, what you do, and what you actually try to prove. So that's no good for privacy. If we make a, a digital signature be anonymous, so that will be better. The question is, what type of anonymous signature is good for that, that, this application? We know group signature, ring signature, and we also know various other uh, signatures which can provide anonymity. But uh, it turned out none of those existing 
uh, crypto community familiar with one is suitable. I will tell you the reason why. So we actually choose uh, an anonymous signature called the direct anonymous attestation. This is a group type of signature. You probably are familiar with group signatures. It's proof membership with traceability. Verify cannot know who you are, but a trusted third party tracer or group manager can find who you are. But that traceability is not good because we cannot find a pure trusted third party, you will let, it, let this party deal with your privacy. To change in the traceability, we make uh, some property called the user control the linkability. So what that means? That means if approver and verify, they have agreement, say, I don't need to know who you are, the verify said. But I do want to know, every time you come in to me and you deal with me for the business, I know you're coming back. Yeah. So if we agree, then I give you a base name. You always use my base name, send me anonymous signature, then I know you're coming back, although I don't need you know, know your name address whatsoever. So that is user control the linkability. We also want to anonymity is strong. That means if two verifies, they deal with same user, they cannot be linked. So they only individually link a user with them. So that is the idea about the DAA. But uh, to balance the security and the privacy, we want to stop uh, approver abuse the system. For pure anonymity, approver can do something better than walk away. Nobody knows who they are. Yeah. So we want to stop this. So we provide the two types of revocation. One revocation is called the rock key revocation. If approver's key is compromised and or probably even sold in the eBay, I don't know whether that this business existed or not, that kind of key cannot be used to sign attestation evidence. The second way is a link-based revocation because Verify can build its, its local revocation list. If somebody not behave good and the Verify can stop talking to them anymore. A DA actually has a relatively long history. Start with 2003. It was required by Trusted Computing Group, TCG. They want to have that type of signatures for Trusted Computing Module, TPM. At that time, we actually introduced the group signature to them, ring signature to them, but they don't like it. Uh, for the reason because ring signature, everybody needed to know your ring member's public key, but uh, have you ever know your neighbor's TPM public key? No, you don't. And whether we can have a group manager to deal with traceability, I already said no, we don't have a trusted third party. Particularly for those bigger companies to deal with each other, Nobody wants to be a tracer. So we designed the DIA for TCG, and the paper was uh, originally published in uh, CCS 2004. Luckily, the paper uh, received a test, uh, a test of time award 10 years later. But that is history. This is uh, to put the DAA into real applications. There are two versions: RSA-based DAA. It's used in TPM 1.2, and uh, elliptical curve-based DAA used in TPM 2.0.
there are a lot of improvement, a lot, a lot of works in the AA. More recently, of course, we're dealing with uh, um, post-quantum, and uh, we have already seen several lattice-based DAA in the literature. Although their performance is not ideal yet, there's still um, bigger room to improve it. But nevertheless, lattice-based DAA existed. For this work, we would like to design a DAA purely from symmetric primitives. We already see many signatures from symmetric uh, um, primitives, like a hash-based signature, various hash-based signature, one time, various fair time, stand for, stateless, and we also see a picnic style digital signature. I have been very carefully choose my words. I call the picnic style instead of picnic signature. Picnic signature is the first this type of signatures, but I don't mean this picnic signature only. I mean this type of signatures. We also see anonymous signature from uh, the from symmetric setting, like a group signature, ring signature, and uh, uh, enhanced privacy ID that is EPID. But what is the challenges to DAA? What's special of DAA? Uh, from my point of view, there are two difficulties we face if we want to design hash-based DAA. The first one is we want to deal with a very large group. All those anonymous signatures we see from symmetric setting, they based on a single Merkle tree. So you probably all know single Merkle tree means the, the size of uh, groups you can deal with is roughly 2 to the 10 to 2 to the 30. You don't want to make a Merkle tree much larger, it takes too long. But we want to deal with a very large group, which could be 2 to the 60. That is about the TPM application required. So that is number one we face, number one difficulty we face. Number two, TPM is a small chip, very slow, very expensive, is a really re uh, low resources. We want to make a DAA signature, not only signed by TPM as a key holder, but also software in the computer. The soft those software we call the host, the TPM's host computer, the host hold the TPM uh, DAA credential and do real zero knowledge proof. The tricky bit is TPM is arguably trustworthy. That's why they, they use it. You, uh, we use it. But the host software is not trusted. Uh, we called it semi-trusted because we give privacy power to the software, but uh, there is no security trust. So those two things we needed to handle. Our design choice is we use two building blocks. One is a hash-based stateless signature. We choose the Sphinx Plus for a very obvious reason. It's going to be a standard, NIST standard. We also choose another building block that is picnic style signature. We actually haven't decided which one to choose yet, but we put a picnic style signature as our building block in this paper. However, we cannot directly use Sphinx Plus as DAA credential. There are two reasons. First one is Sphinx Plus use 
WOTS plus, WOTS plus, but WOTS plus is very hard to be zero knowledgeably proof because except you put a, a, a very heavy mechanisms which is a cost. Otherwise, the message is leaked because it will handle how many bits, how many hashes of message to be the signed. So for this reason, we need to get rid of the WOTS plus. The other one is also difficult is force. Okay. Let's see what the Sphinx Plus looks like. Sphinx Plus uh, looks like this, uh, the hybrid tree, and the bottom layer of a hybrid tree is force. The force is, uh, uh, is a few time signatures. So it's a very clever idea, actually. But uh, the difficulty for force is a top part of force is a hash function. We want, we want to make the proof more efficient. We changing the hash function to another Merkle tree. I will tell you the details. Then the subtrains in the Sphinx Plus is XMSS type of subtrains. The glue part between subtrains is WOTS. So, I already said we want to get rid of WTS because it's too hard to prove. We also want to change the force to make the top part is Merkle tree allowed efficient proof. Now, after changing, uh, our Sphinx Plus or modified Sphinx Plus is the, set, the lower part. So that means every layer, the subtrains is a force type of chain, but we modified it, we call it the M force. So this is a Merkle force. There is no glue part because they can glue up together because that's natural force. After this, we called this uh, an Modify the Sphinx Plus, F Sphinx Plus. Okay, I would like to say two more things to probably make uh, the, uh, to fill the gap. I'm sure you, you think uh, my talk is not make sense in some place because the, some information is missing. I'm going to fill in this. First one. How to change in force to M force? Yeah. Force is the top one, M force is the bottom one. The only difference between force and M force is the top layer in the force is a hash function. And for our modified Merkle force is a Merkle tree. The force works like that. If you get a message, you split into blocks, then you put each block in each subpart of the train, and then dependent on the message you signed, you find the position of the train and reach to the top. In the force, the top part is a hash, that means to hash all the uh, sub root values together. In our modification, we make it through to the Merkle chain on the top of read. So this looks like a small changing, and even then it looks like more efficient. Why this changing we made? That is because we want to make the whole proof is a Merkle type of proof. You probably all know the picnic need many, many runs that will stop a user to cheat. For this many runs, if we think picnic is only small note in a giant, the Sphinx Plus uh, hybrid tree, then the work is enormous. 
yeah, the performance is very hard to manage. So, but uh, we calculated uh, the probabilities, find we don't need the let verify to verify every block, every runs. We can let verify to only verify some small bits every runs because the total number of runs is still very large and the probability for a, very, for a prover to cheat is lower. Is, is actually negligible. So that's why we make uh, the force change into M force that allows us for every run, we only put a small bit into the proof. And uh, this small bit can go through the Merkle trace authentication pass, get to the top. To the top means every part are every part is associated with the same tree. Yeah. Okay, now I put everything together. This slide looks a bit scaly, but actually not that bad. This is a summary of our scheme. Start from bottom, a DAA signature is a capital, the, I don't think this work, I tried before, but uh, is a capital the uh, sigma. The signature including a random straight that make uh, the signature randomness, and uh, uh, a signature link token, SLT. The link token is because we want to achieve user control, the linkability, so this token is used for. And uh, then com is a commitment is a commitment of the a credential that is f sphinx plus signature then finally the uh, proof this is a non interactive zero knowledge proof pi pi d we call it from verifying's point of view a daa signature is just a pi d so pi d is a zero knowledge proof of F Sphinx plus signature. But uh, from signer's point of view, we, because we have to split a TPM with a software host, we let the TPM to deal with minimum, every necessary part associated with a signing key, including computer, uh, the link token and to compute a Sphinx plus entry, so that is the TPM's job. Then we let the TPM's calculation pass it to the host. Host deal with all the zero knowledge proof heavy duty bit. Between TPM and the host, this is tricky bit. This probably the most clever part for this work is we put a little hook. So TPM's job and the host's job, they actually link together. Yeah. So verify where I see this is a single signature, but actually there are two signers joined together. That's the DAA signature. OK, to finish with it, we proved our scheme using UC model. And uh, this uh, proof indicates uh, all the DAA signature and the privacy properties can be held for this hash-based one. To conclude this, we provided the first uh, hash-based DAA signature. And uh, this has uh, two building blocks, Sphinx Plus type of signature used as uh, uh, the DAA credential and picnic style signature used for zero knowledge proof. I have to say this work is still in early stage because we know for those two building blocks they are still in the development and we're looking forward to see a more efficient one coming out. Thank you. Are there any questions? I, we have a, a time for a, several, uh, for a couple. Okay. 
If we, there are no questions, we can just thank the speaker. Thank you.